2001 campaign off to a scorching start by winning the first race of the season. Well, we won the Lichtenberg overall, which is lovely. Um, this morning we got two trucks ahead of us, the two factory Nissans, and uh, they're very, very quick. And this is very fast terrain, they're faster than us, but if it gets a bit rougher out there, maybe we'll be able to do something. While the Chepex have a four-point lead over their Class A rivals, Greg Harvey and Boy Stone, the dark horse could well be the Class B entry of Gavin Gray and Johan van Jaspels from KwaZulu-Natal. Veteran Cliff Barger and Malcolm Hubert trust the factory teams in their BMW M3-powered Land Rover at Lichtenberg. We don't have a sponsor, so we don't have to answer to anybody. So what we're going to do is go up as hard as what we can and see what happens. It makes these work teams work for their money. Schumi and Clinton van Thuren lead Class D, but trail Barker by four points in the overall standings. Barker cannot afford to relax when one looks at some of the names breathing down his neck. Barber's fan and the adjoining Leo fan are fed by the Harch River via a canal that General Young Smuts had dug decades ago. The area is an ornithological mecca, but for one weekend a year, the piece is shattered when the off-road fraternity arrives to compete in the Mitsubishi Barber's Band 500. A star-studded entry of 86 special and production vehicles made the annual pilgrimage to what is a predominantly agricultural area. The pits were a hive of activity as teams prepared to take on the all-important 50-kilometer time trial, which determines the starting order for Saturday's two loops of 253 kilometers each. The American-built Ford Ranger of Neil Woolridge made its long-awaited debut on SA soil. That's an American Ford Ranger. Everything is completely Ford. It's running the Ford uh, 302 V8 engine um, through a three-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, the Ford 9-inch diff at the back. Uh, suspension's really, really awesome. As the Americans say, it can jump over anything, you know, and I think it's going to be really, really good in the rough stuff. As I say, unfortunately, it's two-wheel drive, so it's going to be a bit of a disadvantage. But then the Americans run in two-wheel drive all the time as well. Um, it's an interim car for us. Our new car gets here in July, uh, which is the, based on the current South African double cab, which has been built in France for us, uh, which will be our FIA T3 homologated car, uh, which we'll use in the Dakar rally as well. So we're really looking forward to July when that car comes. That's really going to be awesome. I personally think it's going to be the best car in the world. Uh, so that's what we're really waiting for. I'm just ticking the days off waiting for that car to arrive. Even the clown, Bucks Carolyn, finds time to humor his French technician who prepares the works Mitsubishi Pajero. And what are Carolyn's views regarding the new corrected time starting procedure? Uh, I think that it's a lot, uh, a lot more beneficial for the competitors because when you pass a guy, you know what position you're in. So if you pass a guy, you know you're in fourth or third. Beforehand, you didn't know. The only uh, drawback in the thing is in a dusty race, which I, I presume this is going to be, is that the safety is uh, a little bit jeopardised, especially in the first 60 k's, especially if the first, say, 10 competitors are within a minute of each other. Um, if you take a chance, then you're going to lose a wheel. So you're going to have to drive with your brains, and I think maybe it's good for the sport. Multiple former special vehicle champion Richard Schilling took time out from a hectic business schedule to enter the Mitsubishi Barber's Band 500 in the Class B Nissan-powered Plaster Tech race code. I've really retired from full-time racing in terms of the top class. I built a nice B-class car, and um, when, it's, when the time is available, um, I'd like to go racing with Ashley, uh, do the nationals, and maybe one or two regionals with my daughters. It looks like father and son seems to be very much the end thing in off-road, so maybe I'll start the father and daughter fashion. The Vacation Vans team was out in force with a two-car entry for Stratford Puerth in the Ford Ranger and motorsport legends Sarah Panamava and Scott Abraham in the huge Jeep Cherokee. There's some very good equipment in this in this year's Barber's Fun. You know, the Nissan's are supercars, done all the good they did out of a job. And of course we have the Pajero, it's done that car. But this car is something quite unique, it's probably got the best suspension in the field. It may be a bit down on power because of the power to weight, the car's really too heavy. But it's got a very really nice flexible engine, so I think uh, it should be ideal for the situation, the conditions here. The American-built Ford Ranger is powered by a 3-litre four-cylinder engine coupled to a two-speed automatic gearbox, and the cockpit has room for the driver only. Stratford Quirth explains the features of the unique air suspension. It runs a full air suspension. They use no coils or anything like that. The harder you pump up the air, the higher the car goes up. Then it also heats it. It heats the shock absorbers up by means of the engine, the engine temperature. So it's got the heat exchanger from the engine from the radiator 
to the shock absorbers. So we heat our shocks up, we don't cool them down. Also making its debut was the Class E Castrol Toyota Condor for veteran Kasi Kutsia and Aki Uber. The near standard Condor was built at Toyota's engineering center in Durban and features uprated suspension, a standard 2.4 liter fuel injected engine, a standard five speed gearbox and limited slip differential. The Lichtenberg 400 proved to be disastrous for the Nissan team. Hannes Robler and Richard Leake rolled the Nissan Hardbody Super Truck at high speed and there was some doubt at the time whether or not it could be rebuilt in time for the Mitsubishi Barberspan 500. It was a bit more severe than we thought. We had to replace the whole body on the car. Luckily the frame was all straight and the engine and the gearbox was fine. Um, it's been a tough, uh, tough couple of weeks. I thought we'd be uh, a bit easier than before the last event. But uh, we're feeling pretty confident. We've done some good testing and I think the car is going to be a lot faster, certainly over the rough than it was before, and maybe not quite so quick in the tight sections. So we'll have to see how it pans out. And so do the 50 kilometer time trial. Hannes Wobbler and Richard Lee gave notice that a debut victory for the Nissan was imminent by posting the fastest time, 48 seconds ahead of teammate Peniel de Villiers shown struggling through the mud. The touring car star had adapted well to off-road racing and would start almost three minutes ahead of the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser of RP Reinecke and Robin Houghton, who would in turn start 10 seconds ahead of Butch Carolyn and Henny Tostega in the works Mitsubishi Pajero. Carolyn has won this event twice, once as a driver in 1993 and once as a co-driver for Shamir Bariawa last year. Shumi and Clinton Van Piren were fifth fastest and the Class D leaders in their very quick Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser, a mere three seconds behind the Mitsubishi Majero. One of the leading privateer crews in the production vehicle category, Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smallberger, would start 17th overall and 6th in the production vehicle category in their Lexus V8 powered N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. An airlock in the fuel system slowed the vacation van's Jeep and Sorrel van der Mamba had to be content with a 30th fastest time overall. Would it be a case of third time lucky this year? Woolridge and Skullhammer took the opportunity to get to grips with the handling of the Ford Ranger and did not seem to be too phased by starting 33rd. Last year they came from the back to win. Winners of the special vehicle category in 1999, the Chepex continued on their winning ways to post the fastest time among the special vehicles. They had to be content with third overall behind the Nissans and were only eight seconds clear of Henry Kirstein and René Jurster in the ex bevan Berthold race car. The hard-charging Duke the Sea Brothers were third in their Porsche-powered Chenoweth, 46 seconds behind Kirstein. The Greg Dows and VZ Van Sale in the M&E Glass race code were a further 14 seconds adrift in fourth place. Former special vehicle champions Greg Harvey and Boy Stone chased hard in their Toyota Lexus V8-powered Queen Motorspares Jimco, wrestling fifth place away from father and son Gary and Bodo Berthold, in the M&E Glass Raceco, who were five seconds slower than the Jimco. Stratford Furth surprised everyone with a fine sixth fastest time in the vacation van's Ford Ranger. He was only three seconds slower than the Bertolt and would start ninth overall on the Saturday. A look at the top ten starters for Saturday's 506 kilometer haul. The two factory Nissans occupy the top two places, followed by 10 special vehicles before the next production vehicle gets underway. Sunrise over Barber's fan as the crowds wait in eager anticipation for the action to begin. The smiles and idle chatter among the drivers merely mask the pre-race tension. Time for a quick goodbye and some last minute adjustments before the start of the Mitsubishi Barber's fan 500, made up of two tough 253 kilometer loops with a service point at Liupan. There is a large entry made up of four Fords, 19 Toyotas, nine Nissans, three Colts, four Pajeros, two Isuzus, four Land Rovers, one Chevrolet, and one Jeep, with more than 20 special vehicle entries. From the start, crews head through a muddy section, farmlands and bushveld to set La Pole before heading back to the service point. Then it's another of the same before the finish at Liupan. In the time trial, we had a few problems with the dust, but um, luckily we're starting uh, quite far up the field. We're starting second behind Hannes, and I think we're about 45 seconds behind him. So I think in the beginning it's going to be good for us, um, but it's going to be a problem for, for, for a lot of the guys. And, um, 
we'll have to see. I mean, you, you can't take any chances in the dust and, and hit some. And what are Hannes Kropp's views of his young teammate, Keneal de Villiers? I'm very impressed with him and uh, I think more of the other off-road guys is more impressed. Um, he took like a duck to water and I think uh, he's going to go far and I think he's going to be a, a guy to be reckoned with this whole year. And uh, I think he's going to be up in the front all the time. At this type of pace that we were driving at yesterday, blistering pace, a lot of things happen, a lot of fallouts, a lot of mishaps. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but uh, it always does. And, uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. We'll just take it easy for a while and pick our way through if we can. While there's no tension for the prolific bird life at Barber's Band, the same cannot be said for the crews as Hobler and Leek come under starter's orders for the Mitsubishi Barber's Band 500. Three, two, one, and they all...